it's, you know, there's a lot of different subregions, so let's just kind of go through them. Uh, Saudi Arabia, Kuwait, Qatar, UAE, uh, those countries, the, the very rich countries of the Arab side of the Persian Gulf, they're involved in a global price war, primarily with the Russians, but not exclusively anymore. Uh, they are deliberately trying to drive oil prices as low as possible, uh, negative if they can, and I think they can. Uh, and if they pull this off, it's say even odds at present, uh, it's going to take about 20 million barrels of crude production globally offline for years, and they will finally have what they wanted, which is a crude, a crude market where they can set the price and set the volume over the midterm. Looks broadly like they're going to be able to pull that off. How, so explain this more, because I think um, one of the things that uh, you had previously said was around these negative prices in oil, but... Uh, what occurred um, was last week or two weeks ago when uh, the May contracts, the, the uh, physically settled futures contracts went negative. That's not what you're talking about, no, right? No, the, the May contract was in the United States, one specific spot of Cushing ran out of future leased storage. Storage wasn't actually full yet. Well, you know, four to six weeks from now, it really will be full. And it won't just be a Cushing. What the Saudis are doing is any place they see a competitor, first and foremost the Russians, where they've got a pipeline that empties out into a populated area, or a pipeline that end up, it hits a port, they are sending super tankers of crude to super saturate demand in those locations, specifically going after things like Rotterdam or Suez or Korea that are popular transshipment points for Russian crude, making sure that the tanks are completely full so the Russian crude has nowhere to go. They're doing a, this to a, a slightly less intense degree wherever all their other competitors are. So, for example, slightly intense, slightly, slightly less intense. There's 50 million barrels of crude from Saudi Arabia coming to the American Gulf Coast to try to knock shale out. Uh, that's nothing compared to what they're doing to Europe and Asia. Uh, and the goal is just to fill up all the tanks so that the producers have nowhere to sell their crude whatsoever. So they have to shut down their pipelines and they have to shut down their wells. Now, in a place like the United States, if you do this and the wells get shut in, they can be turned back on later. And from the point that you start drilling a shell well to the day you get first crude is only about six weeks. So U.S. shale is going to take a hell of a hit. There's probably about a million barrels per day of production already offline. Probably another two million are going to happen before the end of the year. That's probably going to be front loaded. You know, that's a 25% reduction in shell out, but that's a big deal. But it will be back in a couple of years. But if you shut in wells in Nigeria and Siberia, they're gone. Uh, it's going to be years, if not a decade, before you see those producing again. So the Saudis are taking a long haul here, taking a big economic hit on the front side. They can afford it. Uh, across the Gulf, Iran, say what you will about the Trump administration if you want it. Uh, Iran is no longer a net oil exporter. They're going to actually be importing over the summer, which is something they have not had to do in over a century. Uh, I don't think that this is going to cause regime change. Uh, anytime you've got 100,000 people in your elite, it takes a really big stick to, to move that. But this is the end of Iran having cash, which means Iran in Lebanon and in Gaza Iraq and Syria and all the other places that the Iranians have had their fingers, all of a sudden they don't have any money to back it up. They're massively overextended, which raises the opportunity for countries like Turkey or Saudi Arabia to turn the tide in their favor. So expect a lot more nutsoid violence in this region because the Iranians, everyone forgets, the Iranians are not the violent actors here. That's the Saudis. Uh, ISIS came from Saudi Arabia. Al Qaeda came from Saudi Arabia. And we should expect to see a lot more groups like that boiling up throughout this entire region, just burning down everything that the Iranians think that they achieved in the last 10 years. It's going to be wretchedly awful. Um, what other countries are you concerned about? What, what